Hey guys, t -Blair. Today I got a video swap with Tactic Angel. Most of you guys know who he is. He's a fellow community contributor for World of Warships, Legends. Uh, he's appeared on my stream a few times. Quality YouTube creator for the game. I got his Graf Spee game. We're going to be checking that out. He's got a DeGrasse game that I played. And if you're not familiar with his channel, I got the link to that in the description below. So if you're interested in checking that game out, click on that. Uh, it's kind of interesting, two very different ships, and yet we ended up with almost the exact same uh, damage at the end of the game, so we just kind of randomly send each other games. Right off the bat, you'll notice he's he uses what I call Luchins. I believe he pronounces it Lutjens. Uh, Tactics speaks a bit of German. I speak not much. I think I can say like 99 Fraulein and Eins Weid Dry. That's about it. So Luchens is interesting on the ship. I've been using Von Mueller when I've been playing the ship. Luchens is kind of the more, I don't know if you want to characterize it as a defensive commander. He's, he gives you kind of a better mobility in the ship. You'll see the rudder shift and the turning on the ship seems to be quite a bit better with him. He also has the perk I really like in Genius, which whenever he's detected, if there's a number next to that, it'll say how many ships are targeting him, which right now he's targeting the Nuremberg, he's selected that target, so when you see that number pop up, that's what that indicates. I actually think it's a pretty good build here, and especially after watching this game, uh, I think it runs pretty well with the ship. The Graf B is kind of a hybrid between cruisers, battleships. Using Luchins gives a little bit more of a cruiser-esque feel, it appears at least, in terms of how the ship maneuvers, so... I think next time I pull that ship out of the dock, I'm going to put him in the commander's seat and see how it runs. And he's also playing an interesting position. You'll see, I think I'm on the same map in the game that I play on his channel, into the Gras. I usually play the flanks on this map, but he's playing kind of behind these center islands now. They're low enough that you can get a lot of shots over them, so having reviewed this game, I'm uh, quite intrigued by this position. and. For capture the base mode game where you're not defending specific points or contesting specific points, I think this is actually a pretty strong position. So that's another interesting thing to check out from this game. Now he's got HE loaded right off the bat. I think that's the right way to... That's kind of the good default shell to start with in this. AP, you're looking for broadside cruisers. Potentially broadside battleships, although the AP is going to be a lot more effective when you're in uh, kind of a medium to close range with the AP, so uh, that, that's pretty much how I've been playing the ship in terms of starting shell selection. So you might have noticed right off the bat, his team is kind of playing grab ass with the radio, and luckily that's kind of died down <laughs> since the game's been launched. It was kind of really annoying endemic problem uh, right when it came up, but to me, that kind of suggests that these teammates are either new to the game because they haven't tired of the radio after hundreds of games, <laughs> or they're just completely not serious. And they're also kind of starting to melt a little bit around him right now, so in his mind he's probably thinking, oh, I might have to do a little bit of caring in this match. But knowing Tactic Angel, I don't think that's going to worry him too much. Now he's doing uh, something that I'm... I would be a little concerned about doing myself right here. The destroyer and his, the enemy team isn't detected yet, and sailing into the center circle is potentially uh, well, it's, it's a risky play, let's just put it that way. But he barrels forward here, Nuremberg sighted. He got the wide angle torps in, and notice there he had HE loaded, but he's able to plunk through that Nuremberg's uh, side right there and get a couple citadel shots, so that was pretty interesting. I didn't notice any HE citadels myself yet, but these lightly armored cruisers really close range like that. Apparently no problem for these Sharn horse guns that are mounted on the Grouch B to punch through that armor, so very interesting there, and he's able to finish him off with that wide angle torp. Wide angle torps are really effective against kind of agile targets that are close range like that, and you know, that'll protect, it kind of makes it harder for them to dodge those torps just because they're kind of more spread out, so any evasive maneuvers that they take are going to be a little less effective, at least potentially. So he's kind of, he takes a real hard shot from the Pensacola. I've heard rumors from people about the Pensacola being able to punch through their ship, and they're definitely confirmed there. That's actually a fairly catastrophic shot 
uh, tactics build on this. He does have the legendary perk that gives an extra set of consumables. So he's able to pop a peel here and he still has two remaining, which is going to be good. But this early on, I mean, he's got decent start in terms of damage to kill. 24k, 25k damage, so that's fine, but the health is definitely a concern right off the bat. Furutaka is just sailing around. Now he's at about, it looked like about 45 degree angle at the screen, but that's why you always want to check the map. He's actually a lot steeper than what it appears to be on the screen, so he's loading through AP. This is a demonstration of the AP even against angled cruisers, so... You know, he's able to launch a couple shots here. It's not going to be able to probably citadel a ship, a uh, cruiser at least, with the uh, angle that the ship's currently presenting to him. But still able to punch through that armor and get some decent damage on those volleys. Elba's presenting a much more attractive, again on the screen, I mean it looks better, but if checking the map it's still a fairly steep angle. He is kind of flattening out right now though, and he's just going to launch a volley here and punches through and he gone so nice shot there and that's kind of the risk that you take when you're playing against a graph speed if you're gonna if you're in the cruiser and you're gonna give broadside to that you better hope that the guy misses because if not that's definitely what can happen you can quickly find yourself screaming at the tv and <laughs> clicking next game so furutaka's now he's angling in pretty steeply he does have this battleship to his right, I believe he's aware of him, but he's trying to at least, you know, damage this ship, potentially sink him. Here he's switching over to the battleship, had the wide angle torps, I don't even, I mean he selected him just to be sure, but he could have just kind of launched those torps blindly. And here's the power, he's got AP shells loaded. Aims kind of upper hull, which is where I want to aim on that shot. Punches through and then slams the torpedoes in and he gone as well. I was interested about that shot. I kind of rewinded where those shells landed a couple times trying to figure out where the Citadel hit on that Texas was. I'm not 100% sure. It could have been waterline. It also could have potentially been a little bit of an extended Citadel poking up under those smokestacks. So that was interesting. But again, these, these grass speed guns, which are the Shine Horse guns mounted on a cruiser. Very powerful, and you're getting close range of this. Battleships, even American battleships, which are heavily armored in the sides, are now no match for these guns, so very effective for a cruiser. And he's just sailing around now, racking up the kills, popping people left and right, cracking unleashed. Sure, why not? He's up to 130k, and even though his team's looking like it was going to melt early, oh, look out there! Turns into the torps. <laughs> And it still lives, lives to tell the tale, so that was a little bit of a dicey moment for me watching it, but Pops the Degrasse, that ship you definitely don't want to be getting shot from the Degrasse being, and that's up to six kills now, so now he's got the T-22 left, it's got AP loaded in, I think he's just going to discharge this uh, salvo just because they're loaded and would probably potentially switch over to HE if necessary. But, unfortunately for the T-22, it is not necessary. So, thanks to Tactic Angel for sharing that awesome game with us. Congrats, man. That was a great game. Hope everyone did enjoy watching it. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. A lot of World of Warships coming all the time. Questions, comments, leave them below. You know I'd love to hear from you. And we'll see you guys all later. Alright, peace.